Are you thinking of becoming a Python developer but don't know where to start? Maybe you've looked up a few tutorials, or read a couple of blog posts, but it all feels overwhelming. Well, in this video, I'll guide you step by step on how to learn Python, build your skills, and actually start making money with it. By the end, you'll have a clear plan to land your first projects and grow from there. So why should you believe anything I'm saying about this? I've spent the last decade helping developers start freelancing and do agency work. So I've seen what works and what doesn't work. Python is one of the best tools you can learn today. It's simple enough for beginners, yet powerful enough to solve real problems. And that's what makes it so valuable. If you're serious about learning Python and building a freelance career, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I will share strategies that can help you stand out and you won't want to miss them. There are actually quite a few areas where Python is useful. There's web development, data analysis, automation, machine learning, or a combination of any or all of them at the same time. Having a goal keeps you focused and makes it easier to figure out what to learn first. You could very easily go and watch a million tutorials that all contradict each other. I wouldn't do that. I would just focus on one single method of learning and improvements. So learn the basic skills and learn more advanced skills and then implement immediately. Do not wait around by watching ever more tutorials that make it ever more complicated. You just need to practice the things that will make you good in the end, meaning basics at first and then the more advanced stuff. So to start with the basics, the absolute fundamentals of Python, you need to write simple programs, mess around with variables. Don't worry about making everything perfect. You're not trying to build the next big app yet. You're just getting comfortable with the language. And trust me, you're going to mess up and that's okay. So every error message you fix is a little win and those wins add up. If you're looking for places to learn for free, there are some excellent resources available. Websites like W3 Schools and Free Code Camp offer beginner-friendly Python tutorials. The official Python documentation is another fantastic resource. Don't let the word documentation scare you. It's uh, surprisingly approachable. In the beginning, you also wanna learn how to learn, like how to break a bigger problem into small ones that you can actually research one by one. So even if you ask AI for help, like, hey, what can I do to solve this problem? It's easier even for AI if you break it down into smaller steps. And the same thing applies to you. You need to learn how to break down a bigger project or a bigger idea into smaller steps. And that way, even if you're a beginner, you can tackle learning how to solve a bigger problem eventually. And when you are ready to take on bigger challenges, start focusing on the area of Python that aligns with your goals. So if you're into web development, try building a simple site using Flask. If you're curious about data, download a data set and analyze it with Pandas. Does, don't overwhelm yourself by trying to learn everything at once. Stick to what excites you and let your curiosity guide you. Later on, you could do fancy stuff like look up what's currently in demand and what projects are available for freelancers and then focus on those technologies. But in the beginning, it's more about your curiosity and staying curious and staying active and learning as quickly as possible because time is of the essence. And yes, you can absolutely use AI every step of the way. You can get AI to review your code, give you tips, give you ideas of how to solve problems. Good developers use AI to speed up their work by easily 100%. So you as a complete beginner or intermediate can do that as well. Maybe you'll be less effective, maybe your questions to the AI and your interpretations of the answers won't be as good as someone advanced, but it's still useful. It's a very useful skill. Very soon, if you're not using AI, maybe even now, you will not be able to keep up as a developer with developers who do use AI. In terms of building up your portfolio and putting your work out there so you get noticed, one of the best ways to showcase your work is by uploading your projects to GitHub. Think of GitHub as your portfolio. Even simple projects can make an impression if they're well organized. Write a short readme file for each project that explains what what it does and why you built it. This shows potential clients or employers that you're serious about your craft. So whatever funnel, you know, way of getting clients you're gonna use in the future, you can always send people back to your GitHub. A good client will always wanna check your GitHub to make sure you're legit. So when your portfolio is ready, it's time to get into freelancing. Platforms like Upwork and Fiverr are great for beginners, but here's the key, your profile needs to stand out. Don't just say, I'm a Python developer with XYZ years of experience. Be specific about what you can do in terms of problems that you can solve, how you've solved specific problems and the result that had on clients or on projects. 
don't be scared of the first few projects. Developers are terrified that they'll screw up a project and something bad will happen. The worst thing that generally happens, the worst possible thing that generally happens is the client says, you messed this up, fix it. Or you messed this up, give me a refund. That's the worst thing. And yes, you lose time, you lose money, but you know, people don't just sue everyone for mistakes. Of course, anyone can get sued for anything, but I've actually never seen a developer get sued ever in 10 years of working with developers. Not a single developer got sued, even if they took down multi-million dollar websites for the night, they never got sued. People just don't have time or they or desire to sue anyone. So even though theoretically it might happen, uh, the odds of that are very, very, very low. So even if you're working at a lower rate at the start, focus on building a strong reputation where you solve problems and get reviews on your account, and it'll make it easier to get better clients and higher paying jobs down the line. Ultimately, if you start as a freelancer, the idea is you're going to have to train and work with other freelancers in the end so that you become an agency owner. You don't just want to code forever yourself. You want to learn how to work with people and have them contribute to your project and pay them. And that way you can become a business owner. That's the long term goal. So don't get too hung up on that right now. It's not something you do on day one for most people, but just be aware that should be the long term goal because it's a more efficient way of working. It doesn't just rely on your time being sold. So below this video, I have another video that will help you get started on Upwork to land your first projects. So even if you're just learning Python and you're learning how to become a developer from scratch, even then you should go watch those videos. That way you'll have an idea of how to actually land those free projects. And if you're a more experienced developer, definitely go check out the video as well, because you need to know how to get clients consistently, how to get projects consistently, and also check out businessmeta.com so that we can potentially work together and we can build a business. So see you next video. It's in the comments, it's in the description, and I'll see you right there right now if you're interested.